Hello lovely people, it's me Nicola back in the Stitches and Slapdashery sewing room. Still using my winter mug. I seem to only have mugs that have a Christmas or winter theme in a good size. Maybe it's time to buy a springy, summery one. I have rather too many mugs in the cupboard. I don't know about you, but they tend to multiply. <laughs> and then we have to have a periodic clear out because it's just overtaking the cupboard and you can't fit any more in. Anyway, how are you all? I hope you're having a wonderful April, whether it's spring or autumn where you live. It's a lovely warm weekend, at least it will be later on. It's supposed to be about 24, I think, this afternoon. It was that yesterday. We were out walking at one point and it was pretty warm. No more sweaters when you're out walking. You feel like having one on at the beginning, but you know you're going to get too hot too quickly. So why bother? Just another thing to carry, right? And this will be the second video that I will be editing on my new laptop, which I'm really enjoying using, by the way. It's really cool how you can use it in laptop mode or you can flip it upside down to an inverted V and actually use it like a tablet. It's very clever. So having the keyboard and the touch screen is really useful. But I did get it a little bit wrong when I was using that new Microsoft Clip Champ last time. And I didn't realize that it was going through at a 21.9, I think, portion when it should have been 16.9. The 11 learn, eh? I've been doing this less than a year and I just seem to be learning something new every month. So I'll do my best to get it right this time. You'll be watching this so you'll know whether I did get it right, won't you? So the making continues. I have been doing some sewing and some crocheting and some knitting. I got a little bit bored with the current whips, I have to say. I'm still working on the Daisy Flower Charity Square squares. I've made a few more of those, but they don't look much different from the ones I showed you last time. So not much point in me showing you this time, really, is there? And then the 10 stitch twist baby blanket. I've only done a few rows on that too. Yesterday, Mr. Stitches and I went out and we drove over to his place of work to borrow, borrow the van. We borrowed the work van, don't tell. And he did get permission first. And he is the boss, so, you know. And then we drove it over to the place where they were handing out trees. So what happened was the city has obviously decided to encourage people to plant trees, which is awesome. So you're allowed to order one tree per person. So Mr. Stitches ordered two Japanese lilacs. And we went to pick them up yesterday. They're about seven feet tall. They're a really good size. So we know where we're going to put them. We're going to put them sort of in the strip of lawn that is between us and the neighbors. Because they've taken out some trees in the past and, and it's really open now. We don't have any shade at the end of the day that we used to have or privacy from that way. So it'll be nice to have a couple of fairly large trees going in. I think they're going to get to about 20 feet tall. I'm not sure how quickly they grow. We put a new dogwood into our front lawn many, many years ago, and it's still looking pretty tiny, which is a little disappointing because you kind of get impatient wanting to see how they're, how they're going to grow. But yeah, trees do tend to grow slowly, don't they? I suppose I'm just comparing to those wonderful wal walnuts we have in the backyard and that massive maple out front. And it's just, I just want all my trees to look like that ASAP. The point of which was to say that while we were driving all the way across town and back, I did a little bit of knitting on the 10 stitch twist. But again, not a lot of progress. And because I was kind of bored with those projects. Oh, and of course, Mr. Stitch's adventure scarf 
There was only just a few rounds of blue for rest days. And he did have one visit with the nurse practitioner on Tuesday where she stuck a scope down his throat to see how it looked. And I considered that to be a review day. And so I did a rust green alternating round for that. But apart from that, it's quite the expanse of blue. And again, I don't think there's going to be much change in that for quite a while. Probably until the big scan, three months after he finished his treatment. But all is looking well on that anyway. So that's good. So with this sort of sense of boredom I was feeling with my whips, I decided to make something else. It was a really quick project, quite small. And my reason for making it is that I had made a little octopus to go with a tiny board book for my niece's baby. And the other day when I was at the post office sending some things, I happened to spot little mailing boxes that are five and a half inch cubes. And I thought, okay, the little book and the octopus will fit in there. Well, there's space, isn't there? I can't just send that and have it rattling around all by itself. So what I decided to make was another little toy. Now, this amigurumi is quite unusually... Hold on, got to make sure my tea isn't going to fall down. This amigurumi is quite unusually written for plush yarn, like a big chenille thing. And I did not use that because I don't have any. But I did have some Scapius Truly Scrumptious in Aran, which is a pretty chunky Aran. And I made a mini sunflower turtle. <laughs> Isn't it cute? It was really easy, actually. And I did, I did decide to put the safety eyes in. I'm going to put a little note in with that and say to my niece, if, if you're not happy with giving the baby something with safety eyes in yet, hold it back and wait till later. They should be secure. They've got the washers behind them, but that's up to her. What's nice about this is there's no sewing. You start by making just really easy little circles for the flippers, which you just then fold in half and, and single crochet across the, the edges to close them. And you put those aside and then you make the little head doesn't create, doesn't take much stuffing this because you're just putting a little bit in the head and a little bit in the body. And you put that aside and then you start with the top of the body. So there are options in the pattern for making it into a sort of fruity theme, like a watermelon or a strawberry. But this is the main, the main thing, the sunflower. And you start here. And so I use the color for my sunflower center here. And then you do some of the petal color. And then you go to the body color. And on this round, underneath the petals, you incorporate all of these flippers and head as you're going around. So no figuring out where it goes. The pattern tells you exactly how to position them and where, and you're, you're crocheting it in as you go, which is awesome. And then once you've done that, finished the body, you just go back and add the petals. And I thought that was really, really cute. I had it done in a day. I started it earlier in the day and finished it in the evening. And yeah, loved it. So tempting to make a ton of those. I always say that, but then I don't usually go back and do it. So I found that on Ravelry. Obviously, if you're not on Ravelry, um, I suggest you go check it out because they have the most amazing advanced search for patterns. You can filter for free, you can filter for type of project, you can filter for weight of yarn, all that sort of thing. And so this is called Mini Sunflower Turtle and the designer's name is not one I'm even going to try and pronounce because I'll get it wrong. So I'll just link it below as usual. And there's a paid version if you don't want to wade through all the chat, but I just did the free version on the blog and it was fine. No pop-up ads or anything annoying like that. So that was good. Very cute. I haven't checked yet whether he fits into the five and a half inch box along with the octopus, but I think he will. He, she, it, them, they.
we've done quite a bit of walking. We've um, we've been out for a walk every day, and and I have Samsung Health on my phone, and it just tracks your steps. And I've been managing between five and seven most days, five and seven thousand steps. But unfortunately, my plantar fasciitis flared up again this week. But I did have a chiropractor appointment scheduled, so when I went to see her, she did some sort of laser therapy on my heel and my calf, which have also my right calf has been not happy either and she did some massage oh that was painful very painful i'm trying to remember to wear my indoor gym shoes around the house because having the arch support is so important when you're at an advanced age <laughs> much as i love to be barefoot or just in socks <laughs> it really does help to to have the arch support <laughs> indoors as well as out so I'm, uh, I'm a bit limpy at the moment. It's actually worse when I'm not walking. Like I can walk with a little bit of aching sometimes. But when I sit down on the couch, my heel can hurt. And then when I get up, I'm sometimes hobbling. And I know it'll probably, it'll probably pass again. I've had this before and it's come and gone. So I'm not worried about it. It's just a bit annoying. So onto the fun sewing. I don't know how many of you watch Little Drops of Wonderful. I know I've mentioned her podcast a lot. And I also mentioned that she has her dodgy bag make along running right now, which I have been involved in, with for years. I, every year I look forward to it because being a sewer, <laughs> why wouldn't I have an extra excuse to sew bags and show them off on the thread in her Ravelry group? But they're having a new thing this year, and that's a swap. And when you signed up, you just gave your basic information, and you said if there was any specific place you wouldn't mind shipping to. And I just said I'd like to keep it within Canada, because as we all know, mailing things in Canada, even within Canada or outside of Canada, is ridiculously expensive. So I'm paired up with this lady in Alberta. And the idea is that we each make a bag and send it to the other one. Well, obviously, I'm not just going to send a bag on its own. I will be throwing in a little bit of tea and chocolate as well. And rather than just pick one of the many, many bags I'd already made, I made one specially. So this is the one I made. This fabric is so gorgeous. I got the fabric originally for free at the fabric shop where I worked because I made an apron for display. And when you made something for display, you could get the fabric and the pattern for free. It would go on display for a month and then you get to take it home. That was a few years ago. In fact, I literally just this week threw out the apron because it was so stained and just looked horrible now, sadly. And so I tossed it and it was this fabric and I still had some left in the stash. So I had already made a bag for myself out of this for knitting crochet projects. And I decided that this, is, this needed to be another project bag. I used fusible fleece because whilst this is cotton, it does have some spandex in it and I didn't want it to stretch out while I was sewing it. So we have some upcycle denim on the bottom um, some just basic white cord I bought a bunch of that at the fabric store a little while back so that I have a stash of it for making bags I used a denim seam for the handle just cut off a pair of jeans inside it's a really really boring lining it's a light blue twill and I put two pockets in I put in a a blue pocket with a pink snap and there's my label. And then on the other side, I put in a flowery pocket with a snap. So that'll be good for holding a knitting or crochet project and all the little bits that come with it. And then because I still had a little bit of it left, I made a little pouch to go with it and put a tiny tab on it and a snap. And then that one also has the light blue lining. So I'm going to send both of those items to my swap partner with some tea and chocolate. 
I need to figure out what to wrap those up in. I don't have mailing envelopes lying around. But that was a that was a very satisfying finish. The other thing I wanted to make myself was a laptop bag. Mr. Stitches was talking about buying himself one, and I hadn't even considered needing one. But I suppose there might be an opportunity to go out of the house with my laptop, and I might need to have a nice little padded bag for it. And I thought, well, I'm not going to buy one when I can make one. Even if you get a cheap one, they're probably $30 upwards. And I can make one for a couple of dollars and, so, and have some fun while I'm at it. So I scribbled something out on paper. I knew what features I wanted. I needed somewhere for the charging cable to be stored. And I wanted a fair amount of padding and maybe a zipper pocket for anything like, you know, memory sticks or whatever. Who uses memory sticks anymore? Well, I guess sometimes they're handy, right? But, but you never know. So I made one and I'm, I'm not 100% happy with the zipper. I have to say, I'll show you it and then I'll tell you all the things I do like and don't like about it. <laughs> so here it is. It fits my laptop. It's a little bit snug going in. It slides out great, but going in, it, it hangs up a little bit on the sides. And I think I should have made it a tiny bit bigger to allow for the fact I was putting two layers of batting in. I also originally planned to do something fancy with the zipper and maybe have it coming out at the sides with a tab on the end. Completely forgot about that. So when I initially sewed it all around and turned it through and tried to put my laptop in it, it wouldn't fit. And I had to unpick all of the stitching all the way around and redo it with a smaller seam allowance. I should have just stuck with my regular seam allowance, but I thought, oh yeah, I can use a larger seam allowance. It'll be fine. Well, it wasn't, was it? It was not fine. So things I would do better next time. I would probably use less padding. I don't know if it really needs two layers of batting inside. Things I would do better next time, I would do this, this zipper better. I actually unpicked the end of the zipper here and folded it so that it went inside the seam before it got to the end. Didn't, didn't get it level, so haven't sorted that out. I've seen a really nifty trick on Instagram for how to fold the zipper and do these that are 45 degree seams, flip it over and it has that lovely right angle look to it. But this stuff is so stiff. It folds great under, but it doesn't really fold the other way. So I, I need to practice that. I used my, my lovely rainbow zipper on it. This side isn't bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Um, apart from that, I'm happy with everything else. I used this lovely granny square print, which is a twill from Spoonflower that my friend gave me for Christmas. And I put a purple snap on it so that I can fit my charging cable in it. I was originally going to make this into sort of um, a 3D pocket, like a, a pleated pocket, so that it would puff out when you put something dimensional in there. And I originally cut out a piece that was smaller, but the pleated idea was just making it way too small. The charging thing for this laptop is huge. It's got like a big, Big square metal thing and lots of cable. So big pocket it was. And then on the back, I put in an inset pocket, which I really love. Not perfect, but it'll do. And then for the handles, I decided to just sew webbing across here and here. And then bury the ends of the handles into there so that it wasn't coming out where the zipper was. I don't like bags where the handles or the webbing is sewn in right here next to the zipper. I, don't, I just don't like that. And that worked fine. It, it got really bulky on the ends though. So. 
And then the lining is just this light blue twill again, which I'm burning through quite nicely right now. And then the piece that I did not use on the front because it was too small, I ended up just making a pocket for inside, which I divided into two sections. No idea what it's for, but you know, you can never have too many pockets, right? <laughs> so it works. Not sure how much use it's going to get because I suppose the only way I would take it out of the house is maybe if I was going going on a road trip, maybe going out, going to stay at an Airbnb somewhere or something where I could actually set my laptop up and it would be more more usable than my phone. I don't know. Just nice to have. And it was lovely to use some of that fabric too because it's it's fun and it's granny squares. I'm going out to lunch today, hence the slightly, oops, sorry, hit the microphone, hence the slightly fancier top on. This is one I sewed a long time ago and I used to wear it to work. I don't think I've worn it in months, I can't remember, but I thought I better wear something a bit more interesting to go out to lunch with my friends. And I think I might wear my granny square shoes as well be a first i'll have to put some insoles into them though the the soles are like two inches thick but still i still need to put an insole in there for the sake of my feet and my plantar fasciitis oh the joys anyway so let's see one more sewing project to show you and this is something i made last night after we had got the trees yesterday and we'd been for a walk and we'd had our dinner, I was sitting there and it was still early and I was thinking, not just I don't just want to sit on the couch for the whole evening. So what I ended up doing was coming down here and spending a couple of hours sewing something. And then I went upstairs and spent an hour watching Netflix, which is why I went to bed at midnight last night. So I had this bit of denim that came with the boxes of jeans. I've mentioned before that I have bought boxes of jeans legs from a lady on the other side of town and she sells like 25 pairs of legs for 10 bucks and sometimes there's extra little bits in there. Well, there was a piece in there that looked like it came off the back of a, a denim vest or something or waistcoat depending on which side of the pond you live and it had armhole curves and I looked at it and I was like those look like they should be pockets. So I made a tote where I used the denim vest or waistcoat and had these armholes, the arm be pockets. So I had to cut the top part off because it got really ragged up here and there was a label that was not worth reusing. Like if the, if the label had been nice enough to make a feature of, I could have left it on, but it wasn't. And then I wanted to use as much of the down low fabric as possible, but there was a bit of a hole here. So I cut a little piece out of what I used for the lining and applicate a flower on there and just sewed it on. I sewed around it just with my regular walking foot. It's, it's not the most professional look, but it works. And so before I constructed the bag, I attached this and this together. Did I interface this? I think I interfaced this. I'm trying to remember what I did now. So what I did, yeah, I, I just placed this. I just placed this denim piece onto the fabric. And because the sides were angled slightly, I just cut diagonally up in, in line with the sides of the denim. And so it made a tote that was quite a bit wider at the top, and I was worried it was going to look weird, but I think it looks okay. And so once I had basted these together along the bottom and the sides and the top, I just treated it as one piece of fabric. And then I added the little strip of black marine vinyl on the bottom from the stash. 
And then the back is just some denim yardage. And I added more of this fabric to the back to make a slip pocket, just to make it look more interesting because it was very plain. The handles could have been a bit wider, but anyway, a different pair of jeans again. So there's at least three different colors of denim in here. And I think it came out really well. I boxed the bottoms quite small. I think that was just a, a one inch, one inch cutout. And then, yeah, the, the lining fabric, bleh. and yeah, the lining fabric is absolutely gorgeous. It's flowers in the same colors as, as this fabric. And the fun thing was that the, um, this group of fabrics, which are quilt cottons, were given to me completely free from a friend who was de-stashing some stuff. So that didn't cost me anything. I don't think this cost me more than a few cents. The vinyl probably didn't cost me more than a few cents. So that was a very cheap bag to make. I posted a picture of it on the Denim Upcyclers Facebook group today and got a lot of positive feedback. I really like it, actually. So that one's going to go in the in the market pile. And hopefully someone will give it some love. Yeah, really pleased with that. I wondered belatedly if I should have put another little flowery thing sort of further up as, as a sort of extra accent, but too late for that now, right? So that's all the making that's happened around here this week. It's been pretty uneventful apart from that. Thanks again for watching. I really hope you continue to come back and see what I've been up to and do leave your comments because I, I read them all and I do try and respond to them all. And let me know if you are hanging out in the dodgy bag make along thread over on Ravelry and uh, whether you're making anything fun this week. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.